Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. This month, HBO began celebrating the 10th anniversary of their hit series, Game of Thrones. That show, which just a few years ago was racking up both Emmys and levels of fan obsession unmatched by basically anything else on TV in the last decade, should have been a prime candidate for loving retrospectives in the press and nostalgia-filled tributes from fans. But I don't think that really happened. HBO's released anniversary video and new season trailers have actually failed to crack 200,000 views, with the season 8 trailer specifically being overwhelmed with dislikes and negative comments. That season and the one before it, to a lesser extent, have kind of overshadowed the legacy of the show itself. It's hard to even talk about Game of Thrones in positive terms without having to throw in a disclaimer that it all just ended terribly. I covered my thoughts on season 8 and the finale in a video from a few years ago, but today I want to expand that farther and ask, has Game of Thrones ruined its legacy? And if so, what does that mean for the giant slate of spin-offs that HBO has spent years developing? Problems is with iron and steel. What you do will have repercussions. Your family will be at risk. So before I talk about the show more, I feel like there's an aspect of this story that I have to acknowledge, and I'm sure you know what it is. There is no satisfying ending to the story of Game of Thrones, and it seems like a solid enough bet that there never will be. George R.R. Martin doesn't seem likely to have The Winds of Winter ready for release anytime soon, and even if he does, he has another massive tome, A Dream of Spring, still to go. I don't bring this up because I want people to be mad at Martin, I'm actually a huge fan of his earlier novels like Fever Dream and short stories like Sand Kings, and kind of wish he wasn't tied down to questions about this one series for the rest of his life. But at the end of the day, an unfinished story is an unfinished story. So what we're left with is one ending that's terrible, along with the promise of a potentially good ending that will probably never see the light of day. And if the TV franchise was over, that would be that, a well-liked show dragged down by its terrible conclusion. Where things get more interesting, I think, is when you realize that HBO is trying to use that show as the launching pad for an entire new slate of programming. They are betting the bank on Game of Thrones, commissioning multiple spin-offs, filming expensive pilots, one of which, starring Naomi Watts, has already been passed on. The HBO that made The Sopranos, The Wire, and crucially, the early seasons of Game of Thrones is kind of gone. AT&T bought its parent company, Time Warner, in 2016. And ever since, I think we've seen a slow but steady transformation of the channel's priorities. The unique creator-driven stuff is still there, for now at least, but for the first time, it seems like they're going all in on franchises making it feel a little closer to something like Disney+, Plus, which is, of course, almost purely driven by franchises. But I'm just not sure that Game of Thrones has the audience interest anymore to warrant this amount of spin-offs. In 2015 or something, sure, the show was riding high. But now, will people feel like checking out these new shows when they mainly remember Game of Thrones for disappointing them? Now, maybe I'm being overly harsh. Like, I love the first four seasons of Game of Thrones. I think those can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any premium cable shows that aired in the 2010s. Those seasons, like the books they're based on, are just overflowing with characters, concepts, and ideas, and it was hard not to feel excited about the possibility of more TV shows set in this universe. I mean, one of the first videos I ever made on this channel was a list of Game of Thrones spin-off ideas. So, I definitely get the appeal, but since the finale, I feel like I've heard very little excitement for any of it. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure that when a show like House of Targaryen premieres, it'll rack up great numbers and a fair amount of discussion. At least at first. Look, I hope one of the spinoffs is great and this whole video feels overly pessimistic a year from now, but I can easily see it going the other way too, where these spinoffs mostly flame out after a year or two. After Battlestar Galactica ended to a very mixed response, Sci-Fi tried to launch Caprica, a really interesting prequel that never quite gelled but I thought had a ton of potential. I think people would have given it more of a chance if they hadn't felt ripped off by the conclusion of the main show, and in the end it was cancelled after one season. 
Now granted, Game of Thrones is a bigger name than Battlestar ever was, but if these shows aren't great right off the bat, I do think they could meet a similar fate. I think another noteworthy thing about the Game of Thrones phenomenon is how it kind of failed to lead to a new era of epic fantasy TV that I was really hoping for when it was in its prime. MTV tried its hand at the Shannara Chronicles, the CW has the underseen The Outpost, but overall, pickings are pretty slim. If anything, the success of the show led to a boom of historical fiction on TV, not really fantasy. Things like Vikings, The Last Kingdom, Black Sails, and the short-lived Nightfall. That's all well and good, like I actually really like Black Sails, but I'm still pretty baffled that contemporary fantasy novels like Joe Abercrombie's First Law series or Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive haven't made their way to our TV or movie screens, even after all these years after Thrones hit big. Now, I'm not blaming Game of Thrones for that, but I think it does go to show that making epic fantasy on TV is really, really hard, especially in live-action television. Maybe I'm forgetting something, but it kind of seems like only The Witcher is keeping that flame alive on the small screen. Having said all of that, it's not like I think any spinoff is destined to crash and burn immediately. Look at something like The Walking Dead spinoff, Fear the Walking Dead. Sure, it's chugged along and isn't a massive failure or anything, but it never had the kind of cultural penetration that the original did. It's a show that needed a lot of time to figure itself out, and I think that rocky first season really sealed its fate as basically just a footnote to the main show. Raise your defenses and call your bannermen, while your enemies grow more powerful each day. Now, I do think that there's plenty of stories left to tell here. Some of these premises floating around seem pretty promising, actually. I'm especially interested to check out the Flea Bottom one, a show that would be set in the seedy underbelly of King's Landing. A setting like that does have me excited. I think that premise, well handled by the right person, could be really great while establishing its own unique tone. But at the end of the day, yeah, I do feel burned by A Song of Ice and Fire. The books, the show, really the Dunkin' Egg short stories are the only aspect of it that haven't let me down at this point. So of course I'm going into it with a fair amount of caution. And maybe I'm alone in that, but I kind of doubt it. The 10th anniversary seems to be passing with kind of the bare minimum of fanfare, and it wouldn't surprise me if HBO slowly finds out that people are a lot less hyped to return to Westeros than they might have expected. I'm willing to admit that maybe I'm being a little unfair here. The last two seasons of Game of Thrones cratered the show for me in a way that no other hit show really has. I'll defend the Lost finale all day, and I even think there's a lot of interesting ideas in the Battlestar Galactica finale, but something about the Game of Thrones finale felt different. You could argue that a show like Battlestar was eventually swallowed whole by its own ambition, that it tried too hard to say something profound and lost the thread of its own characters but I respect that a lot more than what happened to Game of Thrones, where it just felt like the show was slowly squeezed of all of its nuance and complexity, and only lived on as a much dumber version of itself, steered by two guys eager to just clock out and start working on anything else. I mean, this was a show whose creation and development I followed for a long time after loving the first book in high school. Then it came out, and it was exactly what I'd hoped for. I really did think it would lead us into a new golden age of epic fantasy on both the big and small screens. Now, those are high expectations, probably too high, but by the time the final season rolled around, all I wanted was a decent ending that didn't continue the obvious decline of season 7. And what we got was a season so disappointing that people seem to let season 7 off the hook because it looks decent in comparison. HBO can throw all the money at once at more Thrones content, but Honestly, that's just hard to come back from, at least for me. But what do you think? Am I being way too doom and gloom about the prospect of more Game of Thrones? Like, are you excited about these shows? I am interested to see what you all have to say, and I'll definitely be reading the comments below. So one thing that I constantly get asked about is how to build a YouTube channel. And now I finally have the perfect thing to point people to. Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit on Skillshare. Captain Midnight viewers have already watched around 5,930 hours on Skillshare, so I know I have an audience really interested in learning from their massive selection of classes. 
on everything from making YouTube videos to learning science, painting, making films, and just about everything in between. Brownlee's new class is a great example. It teaches you how to build a YouTube channel from the ground up and especially how to get the most out of whatever gear that you already have. Taught by someone who started on his high school laptop and now has nearly 14 million subscribers. But maybe you've done the free trial before and feel like you want to give it another shot. That's not a problem because Skillshare is giving 30% off of premium memberships to my viewers regardless of if they've already done a free trial. There's never been a better time to sign up and start learning. The first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. So learn something new on your schedule and go to skl.sh slash captainmidnight04211. You'll find that link in the description below. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started, because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.